Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. Subscribers, we're on the up. We're nearly going to hit that 20,000 very soon. Appreciate everyone getting on board, getting subscribed. If you haven't, it doesn't cost nothing. Hit the subscribe button, get subscribed to the channel, and you won't miss little videos like this that have gone out on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday, because yesterday I just felt like utter shit and didn't basically the energy or the willpower to get a video out because i felt proper rough from the weekend still as you can probably hear in my voice it's still a little bit ropey um so while i'm here i'd just like to say i haven't done it for a while bit of a shout out to unilight sponsor of the channel if you want anything from unilight put the code in mjtiff at checkout and you'll get 25 percent off whatever you order I'll put a link in the description below. So massive shout out to Unilight. Right, today's video is an interesting one. It's um, a prime example of why you need to cover your ass on jobs, basically. If you're gonna do a certain job, for instance, um, say you're taking a immersion eater out of a cylinder, I always say to the customer, look, there's a chance that it could crack or split the cylinder. If it does, you know, you can move forward. Otherwise, if you've priced the job and you go to take it out of the cylinder and it splits it, it's on you. So today's video is a prime example of why you always pre-warn the customer that there could be an issue with it. You'll see what happens in the video. So yeah, just a little friendly reminder, cover your ass. Right, let's get on with the video. You don't need to hear me waffling on. I um, hope you enjoy it. So today's little job has been a job that I've had in the diary for about four or five weeks and it's for a customer of mine, I do plenty of work for them and they just said, when you get chance, can you get here and sort this out? So it's basically an issue with this shower screen. Now let me show you. You can see the door fouls the wall. So it's sort of in at the bottom to a degree when it fouls the door at the top. It's as if it's all shifted across like that. Now, I've been to try and adjust this uh, over the period of a few months and whatnot, and it's just got nothing in it. You can see here, I think this is a properly heavy shower door. You can see here where the actual glass panel, I don't know if you can pick it up, the glass panel has even pulled out of the actual channels that then push into the wall channels, if that makes sense. So it's actually just shifted completely out due to the weight of it. It's got a bar on here that doesn't really do a lot. Now, I'm not a massive fan of these big glass sort of screens. They look great, but they just, they, they always seem dead flimsy. Even with the bracket on the top here, it's got loads of movement in it. So we've got a replacement screen, but a screen with channels either side and a channel along the bottom because obviously with this one not shut in the water's got through over time and it's took the grout out of the the tiles on the floor but i'm just not as i said i'm just not keen on these so the one we've got going in has got channels either side and it's got a strip along the bottom as well so and i think off memory it's a sliding sliding door on the one that's going in as well so it's just a little bit better with the channels along the bottom you know the water's not going to escape out people seem to want these screens that are just glass which are great but they're just a pain in the ass to fit pain in the ass to get to work properly so we're going to take this one out hopefully it comes out okay on these wall profiles um, and then we can build up the new what i'll probably do actually is build up the new one so it's ready and then whip this one out clean all the frame up and, uh, and offer the new one into place. So let's start by building this new shower screen. Right, as always, I've got everything laid out. As you'll be well aware of, I like to lay all my stuff out when it comes to doing shower screens. So we've got all the profiles, everything like that. We've got the screens propped up there. Now, this is your starting point. This is the bottom rail. So what we've got to do is fit the screen into here. There's little lugs that it fits into. Get the screen into there, bolt it to the side, bolt the other profile in that side, and then bolt this top one onto the top to shore up that complete frame. When that's made, I'll pop that out of the way, and then it's just a case of getting this old screen out, getting the wall channels on, and beginning to get this 
framework in um, into position. But you need a million and one pairs of hands to get these screws in and to hold that, etc. etc. So I'll crack on now, get the actual front of this screen made up, and uh, I'll be back with you shortly. So we've got the frame made up now. I've just got a little bit of packaging just protecting it from that door frame. So that's completely made up. As always, we've got the sticker on the front. And as I've said before on um, shower screen installs, if they've got a sticker on the front or they've got some sort of marking on the front, check in the instructions because they coat the back, the internal side of the glass with a special sort of, it's like an anti-mist or an anti-bead thing. So yeah, always make sure the stickers are on the front as per in the instruction. So we've got the frame made up. What we've got to do now is get this screen out. Hopefully it comes out fine and we haven't got an issue with any loose tiles or anything like that because that would be a bit of a nightmare. We'd have to get the tiler in to sort that out. So let's start dismantling this screen now, getting it out, cleaning it up, clean the front edge of the tray and uh, we can get the new one in. So we'll start with taking this door off because there's some weight in this door. I think it's 12 mil. Shower screens usually come with different thickness of glasses. This feels like 10 mil or 12 mil glass and you can tell there's some weight in it. So we'll start by whipping these four bolts out, take this door off, then we'll take this side of the screen out, which as you can see, it's gonna pull out easy enough anyway, and then get the profiles off. So you get that off, give it a good clean up. But yeah, try and get it out as in as many bits as possible, just makes life a hell of a lot easier because there is a fair bit of weight in this screen. That shower screen's come out all right, to be fair. I thought it was gonna be a bit of a pain, but everything's out. I've took the uh, screws out from the profile, so all we've got to do now, hopefully, is run. Let's run a blade along there, and see if that will get these profiles. So we've got this channel off, absolutely fine. Just cut down the silicon as normal, cut it off, everything's fine. We've got a little channel here along the tray which we've got to get up and then we'll wipe that down, clean all that silicon up and everything like that. So then profiles from the old tray have come off fine and we started to get the ones off for of this side coming down. <clears throat> now this is exactly why Tiling needs to be done correctly. We've started to take this channel off down this side. It's completely off now, uh, but it has just pulled a load of tiles off. And to be fair, this whole wall is completely loose. So I'll just show you. So we've come down here. As we've come down, we've cut all the silicon off as normal. As we come down, these tiles have just begun to break and fall up straight away from the wall. As you can see, there's a little bit of water ingress down here. Like that, like so. Um, but what's more concerning is, if I just push this, I don't know if you can pick that up. The whole, there you go. The whole wall is actually moving. And as you can see, the tile adhesive has been on, on the back of the tiles, but it's just not even bonded onto the plaster. So whether it's been tiled straight after it's been plastered or what, or and the plaster just sucked the moisture out of the tile adhesive, I don't know, as, as you know, I'm not a tiler, but that whole wall is gonna have to come off. 
because it is completely loose. It's not even stuck. If I go like, if I push it down here, it's moving there. So that whole wall is completely loose. How it hasn't come off before, maybe just the screen was holding it on. So that sort of stop play today. We've got the screen ready, made up, ready to go in. But as I mean, to be fair, I warned the customer. I did say, look, we'll take the old tray. Uh, so look, we'll take the old screen out. I can't guarantee it's not going to pull any tiles off. Well, obviously, we did all right this side. This side's solid. This side's fine. But this side is just really consistent. It's like even moving. It's moving up to here. So what I'm going to do is have a clean up, have a bit of a tidy up. And then I'm going to have to ring the customer. I'll take a load of videos, take some pictures, send them over to him. Um, and just sort of show him exactly what's going on with this because obviously it needs retiling before anything can happen and to be fair looking at it got a, just a tiny little cut on the tiles there if it were me i'd have it all out and obviously it probably needs reboarding and that as well so let's make a phone call and give him the bad news so we just spoke to the customer and he's going to have a chat with his missus later on and see what they want to do, whether they want to completely tile the inside of here or just tile this back wall. I think, looking at it, I mean, to be fair, the rest of the tiling seems seems okay. I have, I've, I've been around and checked everywhere, you know, just with a very scientific tap on them and they all seem solid. You can hear a tile when it's not bonded right. Let's see if we can do it. But I mean, you can go around, you can tap to us, you can, you can sort of hear if they're loose or whatnot. But this whole wall is loose. And I think you could get this off, bond this wall and tile onto it and it would be fine. So matching up the Metro tiles wouldn't be an issue. He's going to find out later on and let me know what they want to do with it. And then we can go from there. But this just goes to show a little job, a simple enough job like that, changing the shower screen can have a knock on effect and can be like kicking a can of worms. So always cover your arse, always say to the customer, even like taking baths out, if I was to be quoting to take this bath out, I would say, look, we can take it out, but you may lose the bottom row of tiles. And like this one, I said, we can take this, the old screen out, but where the profiles are, it may disrupt the tiles and you may lose some tiles, which we have done. So, it's just a little insight. I didn't know it was gonna go this way. I thought it was just gonna be a straightforward shower screen swap but as i've always said it's real world plumbing this is what happens on the job so if you like this little video i know it's a bit of a short one if you've liked it hit the subscribe button hit the like button drop me a comment below and i'll catch you on the next one